Hello fans and welcome to Don Gabeline Field here at Wesleyan in Norcross, Georgia. We are joining you in the bottom of the first inning. The Cats are the away team and they've added first. They got a leadoff base hit from Rankin Woolley, but he was one of the outs in an Armand Painter 3-6 double play. So with two outs, Connor Stutz came to the bat and reached on an error by the first baseman. That was... Andy Archer, the first baseman, made the error. Stutz stole second, reached third on a pass ball, so the Cats had a man at third with two outs, but Hunter Davis grounded to third to end the frame, and Hunter Davis is the man you see on the mound now. His first delivery to Wesleyan leadoff man Jamai Jones is upstairs for a ball. I'm Ben Ladner. Hopefully we'll be joined by Bennett Porson shortly. He is working out some difficulties with his mic just to my left, but hopefully we'll have him for you shortly. That one catches the outside corner for a strike. Hunter, the Duke commit, pitching to Jones, the UNC commit. So a future rivalry in college, brewing here starting early in high school. That one is on the inside corner for a strike. Jones knew it, and he's in a hole one and two. Across the outfield for the Cats, it's Freddie Hart in left field, Will Benson in center, and Connor Stutz in right. The one-two from... Davis is upstairs, way above the head of Jones. Around the infield, Woolley at third, Robert DeGolian at short, Kenneth Hartsfeld playing second, and Armand Painter, the junior, at first base. The battery is Nick East and, of course, Hunter Davis on the mound. The 2-2 to Jones. Popped way up. Will it stay in play? No, it will not. About 10 feet into the bullpen down the right field line. Hartsfeld, Painter, and Stutz all gave chase, but to no avail. So it stays 2-2 two and two against Jemai Jones. Perfect game, 2015, first team All-American, or 2014, I should say. First team All-American has an on-base percentage of nearly 600. This is a breaking ball. Did not catch the inside corner. We saw a pitch very similar to that to Hunter Davis in the first inning, so home plate umpire is not calling that inside corner to right-handers. Here's the pitch, low, and Jones draws a walk. So that on-base percentage will creep up, I would assume, over 600 at this point. And that will bring the second baseman, Will Collins, to the plate, number nine. Collins is a senior infielder. Starting here for the varsity team, infield at double play depth. Jones is a threat to steal. He is a five-tool player, hitting over 450 with three home runs, 22 stolen bases already on the season, and plays a great center field. Here's the pitch. Jones is not running. That one catches the outside corner. Strike one to Collins. Well, the scouts are out here at the field tonight, keeping their eyes primarily on Jones. But if others impress, of course, uh, the scouts of the MLB, I would assume, would have open minds. A couple big-time prospects on the Westminster side of the field. you got Rankin Woolley, the catcher, infielder, and sometimes pitcher out there, committed to LSU. There goes Jones. The pitch is a strike. Here's the throw. It's late and not on target, and you need to make a near-perfect throw to get to the speedy Jemai Jones. So he is safe at second with a stolen base. His 23rd of the year. And Jones is slow to get up over there at second base. The manager, Brian Kramer, coming out to check on his star center fielder. Jones trying to walk off an injury. Well, both these teams are in the top of the pack, so to speak, for each of their classifications. Wesleyan, the number one team in AA. Westminster, a top five team in AAA. After moving up a classification, moved out of Wesleyan's region and GAC and Lovett and Hapeville Charters region last season. Wesleyan stayed put, so they still play those same teams, and they've managed to be the number one team in AA. They did suffer a 7-6 loss to Lovett recently. This Wesleyan team is 15-3 and 
And those three losses have come by a combined three runs. So this is a team that has played in some close ball games. They've been on the winning side of some of them and on the losing side of others, as I just mentioned. But they have had their share of blowouts. They, the teams that they should handle, they have handled by some pretty hefty margins. They have won games by scores of 21 nothing and scores similar to that. The 0-2 to Will Collins was a ball, so making it 1-2. and two. Jones is all right over there at second base. He'll stay in the game. Davis from the stretch gets the sign. Jones not running. Pitch grounded over Painter's head. Jones rounding third. He's going to come home. Here's the throw. It's cut off by Painter. Ooh, they had a shot at Jones. So Jamai Jones comes in to score the game's first run. I'll tell you, they had a shot at Jones. If Painter had let that ball go through, Connor Stutz made a pretty good throw. And Jones was only about halfway down the third base line when Painter caught the ball. So Wesleyan gets the game's first run. They are on the board. No one out. And now another hit to the right side. Another base hit to right field. So Carter Hall, the shortstop who's committed to Georgia Tech, is aboard. And now his brother, the sophomore Colin Hall, will come to the plate. Colin, like I said, just a sophomore, but hitting cleanup for Wesleyan. The Halls are the sons of the Georgia Tech head baseball coach. And so Carter will be going to join and play for his father next season down in Atlanta. So Davis in a little bit of a jam here in the first inning. Two on, one in, and nobody out here in the first inning for Wesleyan. First pitch to Hall, a strike, a ball, I should say. Davis with a look over to second, comes to the plate. Ground ball up the middle, it's gonna get through. Benson bobbles it out there in center. And so another run is gonna come in to score. Colin Hall does his job. Another hit, another run. Colin Hall with at the plate, number one. a single. And then Benson bobbled the ball in center. So good heads up base running to take second on the throw by Hall. So Wesleyan is off to an early 2-0 lead here in just the bottom of the second inning. Breaking ball was in the dirt to Andrew Sauer, the pitcher, but called a strike. Sauer, number one, committed to the Naval Academy to play baseball and join the military next year. This is a team with a lot of seniors. Andrew Sauer, Jemai Jones, Carter Hall, Brendan Abernathy, Sam McWhorter, Will Collins, Christian Stark are all seniors for this Wesleyan team. Here's the pitch. Good stop by the catcher, Nick East. Ball two to Sauer. Two on, two in, and nobody out here. Bottom of the second inning. Wesleyan with three hits already, all of them singles. This one is outside, and now three and one to Sauer. So the Duke commit, Hunter Davis, is running into some trouble here in the bottom of the first. That one catches the outside corner. Count runs to three and two. Just barely made it over the outside corner. Oh. 
Here's Davis's pitch. Swing and a miss by Sauer. And on the, the passed ball, the run is going to come in. So the strikeout was recorded, but the out was not. So credit Hunter Davis with the strikeout. But the Cats don't get the out. Manager Russell Wren is out, I think, arguing that there was a tip. The ball is tipped. Home plate umpire is coming out towards the mound. And he's going to confer with his field umpire. So hold everything. Carter Hall was the man who scored from third. But the run may come back. Let's see what they say. I think they're going to leave it as it was called initially. So score the run for Wesleyan. That makes it 3 nothing. Gives Sauer the RBI. So Andrew Sauer reaches first. Colin Hall moved up 90 feet to third. And his brother Carter came in to score the third Wesleyan run. Infield at double play depth. I think at this point they would still concede the run to get the double play. Here's the pitch outside to Christian Stark, who is the batter, the left fielder, number 14. He wears a great number out there for Wesleyan. Davis working from the stretch. Here's the pitch outside again. He's been missing to that same spot. Pitch in, pitch out so far. Davis throws hard. He can consistently get up in the upper 80s and occasionally touch 90 if he's really on. But so far today, he has not been. Here's the pitch. It's crushed to center field. Benson has a beat on it. Here's the throw. Coming in, cut off by Painter. The run would have scored anyway. So Colin Hall comes in to score. Stark flies out for the first out of the inning, but credit him with an RBI. And the courtesy runner, number 15, Cole Mannion, stayed at first. Throw over to check on Mannion, running for the pitcher, Andrew Sauer. And now Sam McWhorter, the batter, hitting with one out. A ground ball here would really help the Cats. Foul back our way against the net. So 0-1 to McWhorter. Another one of those seniors I mentioned. That one is outside to McWhorter, number six. McWhorter is running. They may have him in a rundown, but a miscommunication. No one came to cover second, and he's threw it into center field. So Mannion with a stolen base. And the Cats look really out of shape here in the first inning. One run on, or sorry, four runs on three hits so far for Wesleyan. They made one error in the top of the inning. Cats with no errors, but obviously have given up those four runs. Another foul back by McWhorter. Two and two count. 
Jones, Collins, Hall, and Hall, the first four batters for Wesleyan, have all come in to score. Here's the pitch from Davis. McWhorter did not go around. The pitch was in the dirt. Three and two. They're going to appeal, but I think it was pretty clear that McWhorter did not go around. Here's Davis's pitch. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out. Davis is second of the game and second of the frame. Remember the first strikeout, Sauer was down on strikes, but reached first base anyway on the drop third strike, so no out was recorded. So that's Davis's second strikeout, but only the first one he's had for an actual out. Manning with a big lead over there at second. East throws down, but Manning was back in before the tag was applied. <laughs> Two outs here, bottom of the first. Cats down 4 nothing. Ben Ladner with you. We'll have Bennett Porson on at the start of the next half inning. Now 0-2 to Brendan Abernathy at the DH. Batting for Andy Archer, the first baseman. Here's Davis. Abernathy thought about it, but didn't go. No relation, of course, to Westminster football legend Ralph David Abernathy IV. Ooh, just missed the outside corner. That's the third pitch this game that seems to have caught that outside corner, but home plate umpire has been pretty stingy about that corner and not given it to pitchers. He is consistent, though, about both teams. Here's the pitch. That one caught the outside corner. Abernathy not happy about that, but he is down on strikes to end the inning. So... Hunter Davis strikes out three men in the bottom of the first inning. But Wesleyan gets four runs in the frame on three hits. They leave one on base. So at the end of one inning, we head to the second with your score. Four nothing. Cats coming up in the top of the second. We'll be right back on WCAT. Back with more Westminster baseball on WCAT. Ben Ladner, Bennett Porson here at Don Gaveline Field here at Wesleyan. We'll get to the name of that field a little bit more in just a sec. Will Benson, the batter, and he stings one in a right field. Benson's going to round first and head for second. Here's the throw. It's going to be close, and he's in there. Will Benson with a hustle double. The throw pulled the shortstop, Carter Hall, off the base. And you got to credit Benson with a double there. Bennett, I was 
thinking before the game, and I've said this a lot last year, how much Benson reminds me of Jason Hayward, just his physique, the, the left-handed batter, extremely skilled outfielder, and that play was very Hayward-esque with the way he just hustled and beat it out for the double. You talk about that wonderful hit out to the outfield, and then, you know, you, he definitely reminds me of Jason Hayward. He's got that tall build. Good guy, and then you see him with the wheels coming around the first base and getting to the second base with the double. Great play there. Way to start off the uh, second inning after a rough bottom first. So Benson providing the spark here in the top of the second. Freddie Hart at the plate, the senior outfielder. Benson with the speed, not going, and the umpire still not calling that inside corner. Four times now that... He's refused to give pitchers that location, and I think all four of those pitches have been breaking balls. This one is low. Count runs to two and one. So Hart working the count here. Benson a good runner at second. Not a very big lead, and not going. Upstairs to Hart, count runs to three and one. So we were mentioning the location of this field, Don Gabeline Field. Don Gabeline was actually one of the presidents of Westminster as this one has flied into right field and caught. Benson will tag from second and make it standing. So Hart does his job, gets the run, the runner, I should say, over. But going back to Don Gabeline, a historic figure in Westminster's history. He was the school's president for a brief time in the late 70s and early 80s. And was actually a big part of the, uh, the opening of the new library, was at that ceremony, has part of that library actually named after him and his family as the pitch to Robert DeGolian is in there for a strike. So Gabeline, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, came over here and actually started Wesleyan. And that's why you see a lot of the similarities between the two schools. Swinging and a miss from DeGolian on the 1-1. One, 1-2 one. One the count. Runner on third. Cats looking for their first run of the game. Can DeGolian bring it home? Pitch is chopped over to the left side. Good job of staying alive. Count stays at 1-2. Sauer pitching from the windup with the runner on third. And now here it comes. Foul back straight toward us. That one would have landed just about at my belt if it had continued and had the net not stopped it. Yeah, Bennett, we get a lot of close calls being in the broadcast booth, especially when we're down on the field for home games. We get a lot of balls fouled straight back. Luckily, our cat-like reflexes are there to save us in case the net fails us. That's why they call us the Wildcats. I mean, we're always on our game, and that ball comes right back at us, and, you know, we'll dodge it right then and there. But, you know, look for DeGolian to get a hit here and uh, get that first run in, maybe open things up and get a few runs more for the Cats. Check swing. Did he go around? He did not, and Benson is going to come in to score. So the Cats get on the board. Good heads-up base running by Will Benson. So the count runs full to DeGolian. Bennett, as we were saying, I can't tell you how many foul balls I would have caught had it not been for the Nets. I also can't tell you how many concussions I would have if not for the Nets. So I think those two things kind of cancel them out. I'm glad the Nets are there, bottom line. DeGolian draws a walk. So the Cats have something going here in the top of the second inning. One out, one on, and one in. Kenneth Hartsfeld, the batter, the junior, playing his first year here in the big leagues. DeGolian, a fast runner, had a decent-sized lead over there at first. And because of that, Sauer threw over to check on him. Here's the pitch. Caught the outside corner. So I'll tell you, Bennett, it's almost as if this home plate umpire has his strike zone shifted over about two or three inches to the right. He's not given that inside corner to righties 
outside corner to lefties, but he's been being very generous with the outside corner to righties and obviously the inside corner to lefties. Yeah, that's that's definitely been a key thing here. Those pitchers trying to go into the inside and that up, just not giving it to him, causing him here for uh, a lot of balls, and uh, pitchers are just going to start having to switch over over to the right and get balls more to the outside, not trying to get into the inside. Well, if there is one good thing about the way he's calling the game, he is being consistent. So it's going the same way for both teams. So two consecutive checks on Robert DeGolian over at first. And there he goes. Ball is in the air, out of play. So DeGolian will head back. And Hartsfeld has an 0-2 count on him. Here's Sauer from the stretch. Another throw over to first. I'll tell you, Degolian's fast. I don't know if he's that fast, Bennett. He's got a big lead. Not going. Ground ball to third. Can Wesleyan get two? No, they won't. They'll take the easy out at first. Degolian safe at second. Hartsfield out at first. So Hartsfeld is gunned out on the 5-3 put out, but Degolian moves 90 feet into scoring position. And now the catcher, Nick East, will come to the plate. The fifth man the Cats have sent to the plate here in the second inning, already more than they did in the first. Pitch is in the dirt. Good stop there by the catcher. Delivery to East, outside for a ball. The sun is setting here, just past six o'clock here on the East Coast. Some shadow covering the left side of the field. Good off-speed pitch to East, had him way out in front. And Sauer gets the first strike on East. Field goes about 285 to each line, the assistant coach of Wesleyan was telling me, and about 350 to center. Foul tip goes back to the backstop. So 385, or pardon me, 285 to each line, about 350, 360 to center. So you would assume the power alleys would be 325 apiece, maybe a little less. And on deck, Rankin Woolley, his four home runs in four games, the last four games, so, you know, Look to see him if Nick East can get on base here and uh, see if Rankin can power one home. Rankin does provide you that power from the leadoff spot. Here's another passed ball. So that runs the count to three and two, but more importantly, it runs DeGolian to third base. So a full count with two outs here in the bottom of the second. A big pitch coming up, and as Bennett was mentioning, Rankin Woolley on, on deck. He is a stocky and bulky guy, but has some really good speed. East goes down looking. He took the breaking ball on the inside corner, and he was rung up. So we won't get to see Wooly this inning. Cats will go to the top of the order next inning when we come back. So Westminster gets one hit, one run, and leaves one on base. They're inching ever closer. It's now 4-1. to one. We head to the bottom of the second inning here on WCAT.
Welcome back to Westminster Baseball on WCAT. The first pitch to Jake McCleskey is chopped over Rankin Woolley's head. And now the throw from Hart goes over Kenneth Hartsfeld's head. Not what Hunter Davis needed. A single and an E7 puts Jake McCleskey aboard at second. So now that will bring up Jemai Jones. Jones so far has walked and he eventually came around to score. And he takes another ball. He works the count full his first time up. Popped up and out of play by Jones, bringing the count to one and one. Two and one, the count to Jones. Grounded to Woolley at third, good stab. Has to make a good throw to get the hustling Jones. Throw back over to third. Was not good enough to get the hustling McCleskey. So Jones is cut down. And McCleskey advances to third. Chopper, Woolley has it, looks the runner back, throws to first. And the runner, Will Collins, is out. So Rankin Woolley's been busy this inning. No advance by McCleskey. First pitch to Carter Hall is a ball. Inside corner, Davis can't get the call. One and one count to Carter Hall here in the bottom of the second inning. Davis allowed four earned runs. In the first inning, and this one has popped up and caught by, no, dropped by Davis. They're gonna get the out anyway as Carter Hall is down on the home plate dirt. East is doubled over at the waist. I didn't see what happened. I was watching the ball sail up. I assume what happened was East came out to go try and field the pop fly. And I think Hall, making his way down to first base, was involved in a collision with East. So Westminster is going to come off the field, I think, they're going to get the out. My question is, McCleskey came home and scored 
before Hall was out at first. So I'm, I wonder if the run will count because it scored before the out was made, but after the initial chance for the out was, was dropped. So Hall is down and now sits up. Just sitting down there on the home plate dirt. Bennett, I'd be surprised if he stays in this game. I didn't, I didn't see the collision actually happen, but from the way Hall is moving around and getting up very slowly now, I don't know if he'll be able to stay in the game. Uh, what happened there, from what I saw, is what, when Nick East threw off his helmet to go look for the ball, uh, he just ran right into him head to head. You know, he popped it up thinking it was going to be an easy an easy catch and, you know, started trotting over to first when he just nailed Nick East looking up in the air. Both guys just not looking and then a head-to-head -head uh, contact. But you never want to see that, especially when uh, concussions are so prevalent in uh, high school sports. But, you know, I'll be surprised to see him back in this game. So Hall goes out. Brian, run down. Brian, run and down. so Hall's not going to stay in the game. Wesleyan's going to make a substitution. We will tell you all about it when we come back on the other side of this break. So we head to the third inning. Still Wesleyan 4, Westminster 1. We'll be right back. Rankin Woolley, the batter now. And so we'll tell you what happened as far as substitutions go right after this play. The throw over, Woolley tagged on the face. He's going to be called out. And Andy Archer, the first baseman, is immediately over to check on Woolley. It was a sharp ground ball to third base. The throw was made by the newest member of the Wesleyan lineup, Drew Aspinwall. So we'll go back a few minutes here while we have the time. Carter Hall was injured on the collision with Nick East. The run, the, the run did not count at home plate because there was a force out at, at first. That's what the umpires are saying. So Jake McCleskey, the former third baseman, moved to short where Hard Carter Hall was playing. Drew Aspinwall came off the bench to play third. Aspinwall was quickly baptized into this game on the sharp ground ball from Woolley. He threw over to first, but the throw was offline. First baseman Andy Archer reached up and made a nice throw, but he was pulled off the bag, so he had to tag Woolley to get the out. And in a quick attempt to get the out, he had no choice but to apply a slap tag, which just happened to be on Woolley's face. So no malicious intent in my view on that play, but Woolley was certainly shaken up on the play. So for all you out there that say baseball is not a contact sport, you clearly have not been watching this game. One and one the count now to Armand Painter. He smokes one into center field on a rope. Jemai Jones coming on, makes an incredible catch. 
Jemai Jones. Laying out full extension. And you can see why he is as highly touted as he is. Any other center fielder in 2A, or maybe even in the state for that matter, does not get to that ball. But Jemai Jones went all out and was able to make an incredible play in center field. And Ben, that's why the scouts are out here. Jemai Jones, what athleticism from here. He was almost, he was really far back in the field there, turned on the Jets and got, got to that ball. But what a wonderful play there, grabbing that ball. You know, that's something you see in Major League Baseball. Jones could be playing in Major League Baseball in just a few years' time. Meanwhile, Connor Stutz, who he himself might see some time in the big leagues in a few years after he finishes up his career at Notre Dame, smokes one into right field in the right center gap. So Stutz is aboard with a double, with two outs here, top of the third inning. So Connor with a double, a number of big time baseball players taking part in this game. The man you see at the plate, Hunter Davis, committed to Duke, and the man throwing the baseball right now as we speak, Andrew Sauer, committed to the U.S. Naval Academy. Carter Hall, who unfortunately had to leave the game with an injury, is committed to Georgia Tech, and Connor Stutz on first base, or pardon me, leading off second base, is committed to Notre Dame to play next year. In center field, like we mentioned, Jemai Jones, what an incredible play, an incredible athlete, committed to the University of North Carolina to play ball next season. Rankin Woolley, I believe, is committed to LSU as their top-rated out-of-state recruit. And Will Benson on the on-deck circle has offers from the likes of Georgia Tech, Vanderbilt, and various others. Many believe around Westminster, a lot of the, and a lot of the people in the baseball community believe that Benson could be a future MLB first 10 round draft pick. Shot to the right side by Hunter Davis, out of play. Count runs to two and two. Well boy, Ben, it's been an exciting last five or six minutes here at the ballpark with a few injuries, some doubles. A lot of college people going to college to play baseball. I mean, yeah, this is just some great baseball. Two great teams coming together in a game that sort of a rivalry. You know, Westminster and Wesleyan. You know, they always love to play each other, and you know, seeing great plays, great hits. You know, the bats are hot today. You know, I t when we were talking to the assistant coach before the game, he was saying, you know, he he hasn't seen uh, bats like that in the in the batting cage in a long time. So, you know, a lot of great plays, you know, especially from uh, Jones earlier with that layout, you know, some injuries seeing that. You never want to see those, but, you know, a lot of uh, baseball getting really interesting here going into the bottom of the third. So things are heating up here now as the, even as the temperature drops, the action on the field is just heating up. We'll be right back with the bottom of the third inning here on WCAT. Stay with us.
Back here with more Westminster baseball on WCAT. It's been a very exciting last few minutes here. Jemai Jones made an incredible catch in the last half inning. Now Colin Hall will be the batter. After his brother Carter left the game due to injury in his last at bat. The pitch is a ball. So 2-0. Oh. Speaking of that injury, we did see Carter Hall come out of the dugout and jog down the left field line in between innings. And remember, starters are allowed to re-enter the game at any time. So if he feels up to it, he could potentially come back in this game. Although with a 4-1 lead and this game not really meaning anything in terms of playoff positioning, more just bragging rights and improving your own ball club, I would be surprised to see him come back in. Tough play for Armand Painter, and he's unable to make it. Tried to scoop it off a short hop. And he couldn't make the play, so credit Hall with a base hit. Painter is usually about as sure-handed as they come over there at first, and it's come to the point where you're almost surprised when he doesn't make a play, even as tough as that one. So runner aboard. The leadoff runner is on for the third time in as many innings for Hunter Davis. He's had to throw a lot of pitches out there. Had that one rough inning in the, in the first. Only faced four batters in the second. And now allows the leadoff man on here in the third. Andrew Sauer, the batter, takes a ball to start the at-bat. Here's Davis. Swing and a miss by Sauer. One and one. Davis with a few looks over. And now a token toss over to first. And Davis from the stretch, another throw, this time a little more meat on it. For those of you wondering about Rankin Woolley, he is back in the game playing third, looks to be fine after taking that tag to the face, a forceful tag to the face at first base after being tagged out on a, a bang bang play over at first. Fouled over to the first base side by Sauer. Davis working from the stretch. Here's the one, two. Driven deep into left field. Back goes Hart. That ball is gone. Andrew Sauer helping himself. A two run shot in the bottom of the third. And Wesleyan goes up six to one. Just not what the Cats needed right there. After, a, you know, getting back a little bit into the game after a rough bottom of the first. A two-run shot like that is just not what the Cats need and not what Hunter Davis needs either. So Wesleyan goes up 6-1, to one, expanding their lead to five runs. That was their fifth hit of the game. And Hunter Davis has just had a tough time of it. Bennett, in the games we've seen, or in the games I've seen at least, broadcasting these games, I've only been able to make it out to two, and I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later. But Hunter Davis has, has started both those games but really struggled in both of them. And in both games, he's had trouble con with damage control. He's had both games, one or two innings that have really bitten him. Gave up two home runs to Blessed Trinity a couple weeks ago, as well as a couple base hits. A, a game very similar to this one. You get a few base hits to start the game, a few runs, and then... The bats start coming out, and the other team starts driving balls. So Davis 
is is struggling in these in these big games. But you would assume that, given the season he had last last year, and the pitcher we know he is, that he would settle those problems out and work out those kinks before the playoffs come around. Yeah, and I think part of it is this this umpire right here. You know, he's not letting that come in as you see. Davis walks walks a batter right there on a 4-2 count, but you know this this umpire is not letting anything into the inside. But you know there there is a point when you can you can adjust to that and. And you talk about that damage control, you know, um, most athletics are a really mental game. And, you know, if you can't get your head in the right position, you know you've already given up six runs so far. You really just kind of have to step back and, you know what, you have to realize that you can do this and that you can pitch a good game, as we all know that he can do. And if you're wondering if if or when Coach Ren will go to his bullpen, he, in the few years that he's been here, he hasn't shown that – he likes to go to his bullpen early in games, even if his pitcher is struggling. Obviously, if it gets too out of hand, he would, of course, go to a different pitcher. But last time against Blessed Trinity, he stuck with Davis. The Cats ended up being in decent shape by the end of that game. They, they did end up losing it. But Davis was able to settle down late in the game, which is what you like to see. And Ren let him, let him stay out there and, and work out his own problems. Another reason, the Cats don't have a ton of, of quality starting pitcher, especially now with Blake Huber going on the disabled list with that broken finger. Cats are stricken with injuries. But Huber injured that finger, had it, it sprained a little bit, and then re-aggravated it a few days ago, like last week. Dalton Light, a really unfortunate story for him as the 2-1 is driven into center field by Sam McWhorter. And Wesleyan has runners at the corners. So Wesleyan is really trying to pile on here in the bottom of the third inning. So Mikey Olson, the courtesy runner, he will come on. But like I was saying, Bennett, you have Huber on the DL. Dalton Light, who tore his ACL in basketball tryouts his junior year, was unable to play except for a few innings of relief duty here and there last year. Got that knee back to full strength over the summer. Actually went one for one on the summer with a home run. About as good as you can get before having knee surgery and, and having a, a few more things done with that just to make sure it was really working well and back to normal. And then in the first practice of the year, for it was tried out for basketball again, made the team. First practice of the year goes down with another knee injury. We all feared it was an ACL. We talked to him a few days later. He said that the doctor told me he did not think it was an ACL. Went back about a week later, had it re-examined. Turns out he had torn his ACL in his other knee. So Light, over the last two years, has torn both of his ACLs. And for that reason, sitting out the mid, the beginning chunk of this season, told me he should be able to play by the end of April and beginning of May, right when the Cats are going to start to need him. But he's another guy who can go out there on the mound, give you some good innings, a guy with some versatility, can play short or second, and also fill his duties in the outfield if need be. Huber, a guy who can play second or third or pitcher, and when, he's, when healthy, probably the second best pitcher on this team behind Davis. So because of all these reasons, you have a lot of difficulty finding good starting pitching. And back to the initial point I was making, maybe the reason Coach Wren doesn't use his bullpen as often is because he doesn't really have all that many arms to, to spare. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you also, you know, you get that fatigue when you're starting the same guy over and over again. And, you know, he's not having, he's not having the incredible season that he had last year. You know, you start to see that as you get later into the season. And injuries can really kill a team. And, you know, right now Westminster's working on, you know, you talk about those two injuries to Light and, and to Huber. And those are two guys who can step on the mound if need be. And, you know, you talk about Huber, you know, he can get on the mound. He's the second. You, you talk about him arguably being the second best pitcher. But, you know, if once the Cats are healthy, you can, you can really start working with uh, pitchers and, you know, 
if a guy is really not having his day, you don't have to keep him out there. And you know, Westminster, I can't see from here, but they are they are warming up a new pitcher. Uh, maybe 20, see a change 20, pretty 20. soon. Numbers twenty. Twenty. So, Davis working now from the stretch with runners on the corners. Ground ball to DeGoli and it's short. Flips to Hartsfeld over to first. Painter makes the stretch, but the throw is late. So, Brendan Abernathy drives in a run. Reaches first on a fielder's choice. And Wesleyan is now up 7-1. to one. And Westminster just recorded their first out of the inning. Westminster does have some action in their bullpen. Throw over to first. So I do think, though, at, at this point, you got to consider pulling Davis. Like you said, Bennett, clearly not his day today. And Wesleyan has just been able to hit him pretty well. So 1-0 now with one out to Jake McCleskey. Throw to first from East. Slap tag to no avail by Painter. The pitch was a ball. And the Cats did not get the out at first. Pitch low, East couldn't get the call. Count runs now to three and oh. We'll see if McCleskey has the green light. I would think in this sort of ball game he would have the take sign, and he did. That one was right down Peachtree. And the count now three and one. Foul ball off the net. McCluskey on the day is one for one. He singled in the first and then reached second on a throwing error by Freddie Hart. He digs in here. Davis comes set. Three looks over and throws to first. That's something you can pick up on on a pitcher. I know the Cats take stats like that in their dugout. The number of times a pitcher looks to first and then you compare that as a sharp ground ball is hit back to Davis. He'll underhand to Painter to get the hustling McCleskey. Abernathy advances to second. So Wesleyan gets another man in scoring possession with Jemai Jones coming up. But like I was saying, you can... Count the number of times a pitcher looks over to the base and then count the number of times he actually throws and then mark next to it if he actually threw over. And that can give you a really good indication of when a pitcher is going to throw over and check on you at first, which obviously can help you in timing and planning when you're going to steal a base if you want to steal a base. This one skips up into East Glove. 1-0 and to Jones. Jones 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. Does have a, also have a stolen base on the day. This one gets by East. McCleskey, or pardon me, that's Abernathy making his way down to third. And it's 2 and 0 to Jones. Jones does take his share of walks. His average is right around 470 it was coming to this game but the on base percentage was around 460 so that shows you that he he does take a share of walks gets on base in ways other than just getting base hits although you can't argue with getting hits this one is going to be a passed ball and they won't get him at home
So Davis is really struggling. That one was also out of the zone. Although, I will say, probably one East should have had. But regardless, eight to one. Ground ball to Degolian. This should get them out of the inning. Throws, got Jones by half a step. So Wesleyan gets four more runs in the frame and extends their lead to eight to one. We head to the top of the fourth inning. Cats are going to have to do something quick if they want to get back in this game. We'll be right back on WCAT. Back here with more Westminster baseball. Will Benson to lead things off for the Cats. Benson is one for one with a double so far. He's scored the only Westminster run. Second pitch he gets is... So, two to one, the count to Benson. And taken outside, three and one. Good patience by Will Benson. Here's the delivery inside, and Benson is on board with a walk. So, Will has let off innings number two and four, and he's reached base both times. Good sign for the Cats. Freddie, his last time up, flew out to right field. Put a charge in one, but couldn't get it to drop. Taken for a strike. Throw back to check on Benson. He's in standing. And uh, Bennett, we actually just discovered that the second largest search engine in the world is YouTube. I did not know that. No, I, I was just, I was not expecting that. What a grab there. Not going to get the double play, but, you know, still a great grab there by the second baseman. But, yeah, I mean, YouTube, I was, I was definitely thinking somewhere along the lines of Bing. Obviously, Google number one, but YouTube definitely surprising me there. I even, I even heard someone say AOL. Uh, haven't heard of that one in a little while. They say the next trivia question will rock us even more than that one. So I can't, I can't wait to hear what that is. This one skips away. Hart thought about running, but didn't take the plunge. So on that last play, Freddie grounded to third. Benson was thrown out at second, and 
Freddie was able to reach at first. So it's 1-0 and now to Robert Nagolian. Pitch is taken for a strike. Evens the count at 1-1. One and one. Sowers pitched a heck of a ball game so far. One, ro one run through three and a third. Line to second and caught. Throw back to first. They didn't get him. Degolian with a relatively weakly hit line drive that I thought might get over the head of the second baseman, but unfortunately, a good snag by Will Collins, and they were able to make the out. So Kenneth Hartsfeld, the batter, grounded out to third his first time up. And the first pitch to him is a ball. Fly ball, left center, it's gonna drop. Jones will play it on a hop. So a single for Kenneth, moving Hart up to second base. Bennett, I thought he might try and uh, impress us once again with his athleticism out there in center field, but I think wisely he elected to let it drop. Yeah, that was that would be an incredible play. I, I don't even know what I would have to say about that one, but you know, wisely letting that one drop. But job, cats getting on base. See if we can uh, work something around here. So we're gonna have a substitution now. Charlie Bennett, number twenty, will come in and hit for Nick East. East was 0 for 1 on the day with a strikeout. I would assume this signals the end of the day for Hunter Davis, but I think we'll have to wait till the bottom of the inning to find that out. Strike one to Bennett. Here's the pitch swing and a miss. So Bennett quickly in an 0 2 hole. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss, or pardon me, swing and a foul, I should say. Out into foul territory. Bennett is a powerful hitter, just a sophomore. I remember in a 12-year-old game, hit two home runs against my brother's team. And he singles into left field. Hart gets the stop sign, and the Cats have him loaded here with Rankin Woolley coming up. So, not so fast, Bennett. This this game could turn around in just one swing of the bat, how, potentially. How, how incredible that would be. You know, Rankin talked about that four in the last four on home runs. You know, if he can get five in, in his five games on a grand slam, I mean, Cats would be right back into this. They would indeed. So, Sauer is now going to pitch from the windup. First pitch is a strike to Woolley. Hart at third, Hartsfeld at second, and Bennett at first. Ball one to Woolley. Huge opportunity here for the Cats. Even if you don't get the home run, at least a base hit would do you a lot of good with two outs here. Popped straight up. Collins over. He has it, and that will be the end of the inning. Missed opportunity there for the Cats. They loaded the bases with two outs, and Rankin Woolley couldn't drive them home. So, at the end of three and a half, we head to the bottom of the fourth. Your score is still eight to one, Wesleyan on top.
Welcome back inside the broadcast booth at Don Gabeline Field here at Wesleyan in Norcross, Georgia. It's been all Wolves here in this game. Eight to one Wesleyan. Some changes for Westminster. We saw Charlie Bennett get in that bat last inning. He's gonna stay in and pitch. Davis Conway has come from the bench in to catch. So an entirely new battery. And Hunter Davis, the previous pitcher, now out in left field. The rest of the field stays the same for Westminster. Bennett's first pitch is outside to Will Collins. His second one is inside. So now 2-0. Bennett from the windup. Off speed pitch, swing and a miss. Here's Bennett. The long wind up. This one's fouled over to the right. Here's Bennett's pitch. Ground ball to third. Stopped by Woolley. Long throw. They got him. Great play by Rankin Woolley. Rankin's been busy over there at third this afternoon, and he has really handled the job over there. He played a lot of third base his, his freshman year. Last year, uh, and also played second his freshman year. Last year played less third, more second, and occasionally catcher. This year, mostly catcher and some DH, but playing more positions, also playing second more often, and as you see today, third base with both Light and Huber injured. Bennett's 2-0 is swung on and missed by Carter Hall, who's back into the game. So two and one here to Hall. Good to see him re-entering. Although if you're a Westminster fan, maybe not. Hall has singled and scored. Two and two the count. Here's Bennett's pitch, it is a ball. And so Hall is able to coax a walk out of Bennett. So one aboard with one out here, and that'll bring up Colin Hall. Your final line on Hunter Davis for the afternoon, not a great one. Three innings pitched, two walks, three strikeouts, seven hits, eight runs, all of them earned. So Hunter Davis will have to look forward to the next start, shake this one off. Colin Hall, the lefty, batting against Bennett, the lefty. Pitch is in there for a strike. Count is 0 and 1 to Carter Hall. There goes Hall, driven to left field. Davis retreating, makes the catch. They might have a chance to get Hall. No, they won't. He'll hustle back. The hit and run was on. 
and Wesleyan was unable to execute it. Colin Hall was trying to go the other way with it, and uh, he hit it just a little bit too hard as he was unable to advance his older brother. This one skips away from the catcher, Davis Conway. And Hall is going to move up to second. Ball one, obviously, to Andrew Sauer. Right at 7 o'clock here. East Coast, obviously. Field completely covered by shadow. And they've turned the stadium lights on now. Pop up to Hartsfeld. This should end the inning, and it does. So Sauer pops up. Wesleyan gets no hits, no runs. Leaves one man on base, and we head to the fifth inning. Cats in a hole, 8-1. to one. We'll be right back on WCAT. Changes for Wesleyan. Jordan Ward, the righty into pitch. Andrew Sauer comes in to play first. Drew Aspinwall has exited the game. Jake McCleskey is back at third. I think the rest of the field is going to stay the same for Wesleyan. Ground ball right back for the pitcher. It'll be an easy out to start the inning. So Painter is down. Next batter from right fielder, number 15, Connor Stets. A little dink by Stutz. It'll be a tough play. Throw was on time, but the ball was dropped by Sauer. So credit Stutz with a base hit. So Stutz is on with one out. Back to the 13. 
Hunter Davis coming to the plate. The pitcher now left fielder. Ground ball to second. Chance to turn two. Did they? No, they say the throw pulled him off the bag. Wesleyan thought they had him. Apparently, Sauer's foot came off the base. So a 4-6 put out. Score that as a fielder's choice. And that'll bring up Will Benson. Benson's had a good day, one for one. Also has a walk. And this one is thrown behind him. Davis is going to move up easily. Your final line on Andrew Sauer on the mound. Four innings, two walks, one strikeout, five hits, one earned run. So a great outing by Sauer. Actually had a, a strikeout to walk rate less than one. And he did give up five hits, but he was able to control the damage and uh, only gave up one run on the game. So a great outing over his four innings. And that run that did score was scored by the man at the plate, Will Benson. Takes a big cut here. And it is a strike. Benson was swinging for the academic building right there out just past the uh, right center wall. Here's the pitch low to Benson. Will has some power. At one game, which unfortunately WCAT was not at last season, he hit what was by all accounts the farthest home run of the year if you're familiar with Westminster's field as the pitch is in the lower part of the zone for a strike. If you're familiar at all with Westminster's field, you know that the area behind the outfield fence is lined entirely by tall trees. From everything I've heard, Benson's home run went over the trees in the right field line as another one is thrown behind Benson. Benson not happy about that. Count runs to... Three and two. Benson is a guy who will take exception to a thing like that. Very competitive athlete. Makes him such a great player on the baseball field and on the basketball court. Here's the pitch. Grounded to second. Benson can't beat it out. They got him by a step. So the Cats get a hit and a fielder's choice, but they're unable to cash either of them in. So a quick inning there for Wesleyan, and after four and a half, we go to the bottom of the fifth, still eight to one Wesleyan. Bottom of the fifth inning here, Don Gabeline Field is the place. Westminster baseball is the event. Although right now it's been all Wesleyan. It's eight to one. Charlie Bennett still on the mound, entering his second inning of work, and this one is pounded to left field. It's 
going to drop in for a single. So Christian Stark leads things off with a solid base hit to left field. Next at the bat is number eight, Alex Thompson. Hitting for Sam McWhorter. So as Thompson steps in, we'll take this time to remind you you can follow WCAT on Twitter at Westminster WCAT. Also like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Westminster WCAT. First pitch to Thompson is outside. Ball one to him. 7-10 here in Norcross, Georgia. Cats are on the wrong end of an 8-1 to one ball game. Throw back to first. Only the fifth inning here. Swing and a miss by Thompson. One and one count. Bennett would love to get a ground ball here. And Bennett, as you look at the situation here, you see Charlie Bennett on the mound. Cats down eight to one. We were mentioning earlier about the dearth of good arms, reliable arms that the Cats have to put out on the mound. This is an opportunity for Bennett to improve his, his pitching ability and also potentially earn a spot as, you know, in a situation like this, a, a long, long inning relief or maybe a late inning guy and potentially a spot starter here or there. This work Bennett's doing right now, very important for his role on the team as we move forward. And he's a guy, if he can be consistent out there on the mound and, and help the team, a guy who could earn a spot in the rotation. Yeah, and you know, a sophomore, he's got the end of this season and two more years after that. You know, he's a, he's a solid pitcher, but he needs to show himself to coaches. He also needs to improve, you know, work on in the offseason. And also, you know, valuable game time like this and late games to show himself to his coach. And you see right there, you know, a strikeout's not going to hurt his uh, his record. But, you know, he gets he gets better, you know, you come junior, come senior year. You know, he's a guy you can, you know, look to rely on, you know, to start or even, you know, relieve uh, long inning reliever or, or uh, late in, uh, in the game reliever. So... Bennett has one out here. He's pitched an inning and a third of scoreless baseball. Now with a runner on second, we're going to have a sub. Mikey Olson, who was the courtesy runner, is now going to hit in the place of Brendan Abernathy. So Wesleyan manager Brian Krameyer is doing all he can to confuse me and make my scorebook look as messy as possible. But I'll go along with it. Strike one to Olsen. Pitch to Bennett. Had some good action on it, but died before it got to the plate. One and one the count. So Olsen, who was one of the courtesy runners, now hitting in place of the DH. And he puts a charge in this one to center field. Benson makes the grab. And gets it in. So allowed out number two is Mikey Olsen. And now Cole Mannion will be the batter. Mannion was the courtesy runner for Sauer, the pitcher, but will now hit for himself here in the fifth inning. So put him in the nine spot. So the last three hitters, Thompson, Olsen, and Mannion, have all been 
pinch hitters here at the bottom of the order. Unfortunately for the Cats, Jemai Jones is on deck, so it looks like he'll stay in the game. Although, Westminster's done a good job keeping him off base today. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. Strike one. Second pitch is in there. Call on the outside corner. We saw a lot of that early in the game. Umpire being very generous with that corner. Not so generous with the inside corner to righties. Ground ball to short. Degolian fields, throws to second, where Hartsfeld is covering, and that will end the inning. So some good work here by Charlie Bennett. He gives up the leadoff single, but Battles back to get the next three in order. He's gone two innings of scoreless work. And Wesleyan gets nothing here in the fifth. We'll be right back for the top of the sixth. It'll be Hart, Degolian, and Hartsfeld to lead things off, and hopefully many more after that. Cats are in an 8-1 hole looking to get back in the game. We'll be right back on WCAT. It's going to be Davis Conway here hitting for Freddie Hart. So Conway, who came in for East at catcher, will be hitting in Hart's place. So Bennett hit for East, and he became the pitcher a few innings ago. Davis was the pitcher and moved to left field, so he stays in the fourth four spot and since Conway entered the game the only position he could take was Hartz in the sixth spot so a one and one count to Conway he too like many other juniors on this team playing his first year up here in the big leagues and it's one and two to, to Conway Pitch is outside, gets away from the catcher. Robert Degolian was over to retrieve the loose ball. What a scrappy player, Robert Degolian. Getting over there behind, and he's going to do it again. Look at the effort and the hustle yeah, he's, he's down even, there. He's even got the, the Michael Jordan tongue out as he runs over there, you know, showing his hustle to get over to those balls, you know, getting ready, getting, getting loose before his... Uh, Chip around the bases, hopefully. A scrappy player, a real gym rat, very coachable. His, his teammates love him. Everything you can say. Conway flies out to right field. And now the aforementioned DeGolian comes to the plate. He had a spectacular summer, Bennett. Hit, by his estimations, around 450 for the summer. Was really making contact with the ball, getting on base, using his speed. Bunting pitched a little bit. We'll see him pitch against Lovett as the starting pitcher tomorrow. We don't often see that. Takes a strike. But DeGolian was playing so well over the summer that he actually earned a good amount of college offers from a lot of schools, one of them being Georgia Tech as, I believe, a preferred walk-on. But by the end of it, he decided once... He got into the swing of regular school and everything and was out of baseball season, decided, hey, maybe baseball something I don't want to do in college, and uh, 
he was accepted into UNC and made the decision to go there as a regular student as opposed to being a student athlete at another school. So he grounds out to the second baseman. And that'll bring up Kenneth Hartsfeld. Kenneth is one for two with a single. And we're going to see another passed ball. One and oh. That one is just low for another ball. And Ben, you mentioned that game tomorrow against Lovett. You know, not not the game you want to have so far heading into the rivalry match like tomorrow night. But tune in tomorrow night. WCAT will be making the trip across the pond over at Lovett to cover the game. Um, Cats looking to, you know, not not sure, not calling this game over yet, but uh, looking to have a little bit better start uh, tomorrow against Lovett and see if they can get the victory against uh, across the pond rivals. So the Cats will make the trip over there to Lovett for their only matchup of the season after Westminster moved classifications. They don't see Lovett as often. We didn't even play them in basketball. We got them in football. We play them in soccer and lacrosse as well as a few other sports. But the rivalry, certainly not what it once was even a year ago. One and one count to Charlie Bennett. So that's going to be an important game tomorrow if nothing else, just for Buckhead bragging rights. And this one is crushed down the right field line by Bennett, but I think it's going to be foul. Bennett, known as a pull hitter, really put a charge in that one and absolutely annihilated that baseball. Unfortunately, couldn't straighten it out enough to keep it fair. Here's the pitch. Fouled off of the catcher's mask and against the net. That one was coming right to us and... Didn't have a lot of speed on it. I feel pretty confident that I would have made the play. And uh, Ben, uh, you guys can't see back here in the booth, but every time a ball comes back here, Ben throws his arm out like he's going to catch it. You know, got those cat-like instincts looking to catch those foul balls. But Ben, pop a pop-up. Ah, good play there. And uh, going to retire the side. So we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Still 8-1 to one, your score. Westminster gets a walk, but can't cash it in. That's their seventh man they've left on base so far this game. We'll be right back with more Westminster baseball on WCAT. Welcome back to more Westminster Baseball on WCAT. Ben Ladner and Bennett Porson with you out here at Don Gabeline Field, home of the Wesleyan Wolves. Cats are the visitors today, obviously, and they have not been treated very kindly here. They're on the losing end of an 8-1 to one ball game right now with Jemai Jones, the batter. So Charlie Bennett remains on the mound, entering his third inning of work. He's done a good job in relief out of the bullpen. And he skips one up there on 0-1, making the count 1-1. Bennett has been pretty good here. 
in the fourth, fifth, and now entering the sixth innings. And just as I say that, Jones crushes one to the opposite field. Fair. That is gone for a home run. Jemai Jones absolutely obliterated that ball. Going the other way for his fourth home run of the season. And that... Jemai Jones Bennett has put all of his skills on display this afternoon. You know, he hasn't he hasn't been too hot on the bats and you know gets a gets a, to his third at bat and just crushes one to the outside of the park. And you know, you know the cats are just in damage control now, you know, being down nine one and you know, Jemai Jones taking advantage of that and just crushes one away. Crush it he did. And that ball, when it went over the foul pole, was still going and still had quite a bit of velocity on it. So, I think I might have jinxed Charlie Bennett just as I was mentioning the good work he had done and how good he had looked out of the bullpen. He gives up a leadoff home run, albeit to one of the best players in the state of Georgia. Here's another fly ball to right field, but it is caught by Connor Stutz. So Will Collins is the first out of the inning. But Bennett, I mean, you, you, you look at Jemai Jones, you see all these major league scouts in attendance, you can see why he's committed to play at UNC next year. Started off the game with a walk on the second or third pitch of the next at bat, stole second base, came around to score the game's first run, made an unbelievable diving catch out in center on an Armand Painter fly ball, diving forward, just laid out, full extension. And just when you thought the Cats had quieted him down, he goes deep to right field. And you see a lot of deeper runs with guys pulling the ball, going right, he's going to the left field line, left, he's going to the right field line. But to have the strength to send the ball that far the opposite way, I just unbelievable. And... Uh, you don't often see players like that come around in a high school game. And it wouldn't surprise me if, if he were a guy you see declare for the draft and be a pretty high draft pick next year. Yeah, you know, he, he's doing it all today for the Wolves. You know, out in the uh, outfield, as you, as you talk about, that incredible catch. You know, he's giving these scouts a show, and he's giving, he's giving everyone out here a show. And, you know, Ben, you know, we talked about coming into this game that this was the guy that the Cats were going to have to watch out for. He's, he's the athlete of this team. He's the guy who has the hot bat, and he's showing it today. He came, he came to play, and, you know, the Cats um, had to account for that early, but, you know, he, he wasn't going to let the Cats slow him down. And a lot of the time when you see a guy like that, He's, he's really the only player on his team. You got him and you got a, a bunch of other guys. Wesleyan does not just have a bunch of other guys. They've got a lot of good options out there. So it's not like you can go into a game or a series saying, Jemai Jones is, is not going to let him, is not going to beat us. We're not going to let him beat us. Because if you pitch away from Jones, you still, you still have all the other guys in the Wesleyan lineup that can hurt you. Will Collins, Carter Hall, Colin Hall. Even getting down to the middle and bottom of the order with Andrew Sauer, who has also homered in this game. And the other guys in this Wesleyan lineup, those top six are a scary bunch. So you can't pitch around one of them and, and really try your luck with the next one because when you have guys hitting behind you like that, it, it really gives you good pitches to hit. And that's what we've seen in the, in the case of Jones. The Cats can't just pitch away from him and put him on base because if they do, He's more than likely going to come around to score, given given the offensive prowess of those other guys later in the lineup. Yeah, and that, that's what makes this uh, this Wesleyan team so well rounded. You know, when you have a lineup that can go you know so far deep, you know six to seven guys into the lineup who who you know you they have a great opp great chance to get on base, and you know they can make plays in the outfield. And you know they're showing it today. They're they're up nine one, holding the Cats to only one run in the uh, in the second inning. But, you know, the Cats have also hurt themselves in a way that, you know, they're getting hits, they're getting on base, but you talk about six guys left on base for the Cats, you know, not able to drive those guys home. So, you know, 
you got to give credit to the Wesleyan Wolves and that they're so well-rounded, offensive efficiency, and you talk about Jones, you know, playing a great game and all these other guys playing so well. But, you know, the Cats also killed themselves today, um, you know, with missed opportunities here and there. Popped straight up by Sauer. It's going to be Hartsfeld. Would have been a home run if we were playing in an elevator shaft, but unfortunately for Andrew Sauer, he does not get his second home run of the game because we are, in fact, not playing in an elevator shaft, as I'm sure you can see from the screen. So with that being said, we head to a break, and we head to the seventh inning, last frame. If the Cats want to get back in this, they're going to need a lot of offense, and they're going to need it right now. We'll be right back on WCAT. Back with more Westminster baseball here on WCAT. Rankin Woolley to lead off. We go back to the top of the lineup card for Westminster. A good place to start if they want to get back in this game. Bennett, stranger things have happened than eight runs in one inning, but it's going to be difficult here. As you look at Woolley, Painter, Stutz, Davis, Benson coming up here in the inning. Uh, these are going to be the guys who who will spark a comeback, you know, got the top of the lineup, you know, ranking gets on base, you get a bunch of guys on base, and then you, you homer at home, and that's going to be a good hit there that's going to get ranking on first. I almost jinxed him, but, um, you know, if we can get the bats hot, hot late in this game, you know, eight, eight runs, it can happen. It could happen. Unlikely, but it could happen. So Armand Painter, the batter here, Cats don't have many outs to work with. Woolley the runner on first. And Painter on the first pitch pops it straight up. Hall underneath it makes the play. So immediately, Armand Painter is retired, and that'll bring up the ever dangerous Connor Stutz. Well, Bennett, we were talking between the break about just going, going further on the point we made last inning just about how good this Wesleyan team is as Stutz crushes one and Jones with another amazing catch and they're gonna double up Woolley to end the game. On Believable play. Jemai Jones. Can you believe it? Moving to his left on a ball that was well hit to the gap. He had to go all the way to the middle of the right center gap to make that play end against literally any other center fielder in the state, probably. That is a, a double or at least a single. And Westminster might have a guy scoring on that play, but not with this Wesleyan team. Jemai Jones with his second just absolutely unbelievable catch 
of the game. And uh, Bennett, that just about sums up the kind of afternoon it's been for Westminster. They're on the losing end of a 9-1 ball game. And after a play like that, there's not much you can do other than just smile and shake your head. I mean, that's, that's just another play that you see on SportsCenter Top 10. I mean, he came so far. He got on his horse, and he laid out for that ball. And, you know, it was just great playing all around from this Wesleyan team. Ben, we, you mentioned that we talked about during the break just how talented, you know, all around this Wesleyan team is. And, you know, you know they, they just played a better game than the Cats. You know, Cats hurt themselves. Plagued by injuries, and uh, uh, you know, you got to give credit to the Wesleyan Wolves and Jemai Jones on that final play. Just, I mean, what an athlete! Yeah, I think if uh, if there's one thing we've learned from this game, it's simply this: Jemai Jones is really, 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 really good at baseball. So, Hunter Davis is your losing pitcher. Andrew Sauer, your winner. For Westminster, is not. There's not much to say about it. Davis just didn't have his best stuff today, and he was going up against a lineup that was really stacked with a lot of good players. He gives up four in the bottom of the first, four in the bottom of the third, and that j ended his day. Charlie Bennett came in, did some good work in his three innings of work, gave up one run. Uh, you could probably guess how that one run came and who did the damage, fitting that it would be Jemai Jones with a deep shot down the right field line that got out of here for the ninth and final run of the game for Wesleyan. And then, like we just talked about, to seal it off, Jones with the amazing full extension layout. And those two plays just sum up what a great player he is, doing it all. And I think the... The, the, the award winner for our player of the game is pretty obvious. It's Jemai Jones. A walk, a home run. So one for three total on the day. And obviously those two outstanding defensive plays. So, unfortunately, the Cats lose this one. For Bennett Porson, I'm Ben Ladner saying thank you for watching and reminding you of our final score once again. It's 9-1. to one. Cats on the losing end. So, thank you for watching. Go Cats, and make sure you join us tomorrow night for another great matchup between Westminster and our rival. Love it. We'll have that game on WCAT for us. Thank you for watching, and go Cats.